Every city has a secret life, and London more than most. How far into that life can the tourist penetrate? Not far, unless he has friends or a lot of influence. All pubs are open to him, but by no means all drinking places. Indeed, the stranger won't get a drink at all before 11 in the morning, between 3 and 5.30, or after 11 at night. The price of a ticket will get him into almost every cinema, almost every theatre, but not quite all. And the same goes for eating places. Gambling games are forbidden him, unless he counts challenging himself on a pin table. So often in London, perhaps more than anywhere else, the sign says, members only. At the seamy end of the scale, it's only too easy to become a member, but if you join this ladies' club, you're likely to get near beer, near to a girl only, and near ruin is the price. At the other end are the traditional London clubs. This is the Athenaeum. Coffee houses, many of them, 300 years ago, they became the exclusive gentlemen-only clubs of the last century. Today, perhaps, the image has slipped a little, finances are often shaky, but a surprising number are still with us. Typical is the National Liberal Club, standing on Thames side like some great superannuated ship. It may not be there for long, so valuable is the site that a property deal has been mooted, but a new club would be incorporated in any new building. Actors Fred Emley and Sidney Taffler are actually members of the Savage Club, who've been guests of the National Liberal while awaiting their own new premises. In no one of the public rooms could less than a thousand people feel overcrowded. Membership is cheap compared with many clubs of comparable status. 20 guineas a year for town members, 10 for those who live out of London, and reduced rates for youngsters up to 30. The club was founded by Mr. Gladstone and his friends, and no fewer than 27 portraits and busts of the grand old man are to be found here. Now you'll have to take the other 25 on trust. If the entrance hasn't overawed you, how about the staircase? It looks centuries old, but it's post last war and cost the taxpayer about 150,000 pounds. The original was bombed and the War Damage Commission had to foot the bill for a new one. What can be done with it if the building comes down is anyone's guess. Having climbed the stairs, the lift, genuine Victorian, takes almost as long, you reach the library, the Gladstone Library. With over 40,000 volumes, one of the finest club libraries in the world. Talking is forbidden. So are women. Not simply because nothing could stop women talking, but because all the great London clubs forbid women, except as visitors in certain rooms at certain times only. The reason given is no demand. Perhaps the real reason is that members' wives wouldn't allow it. If husband is to be allowed out on his own, then he's better off in a men-only environment. And if husband can't get home, there are 140 strictly bedrooms. One compensation at the National Liberal Club is a superb view of the Thames from the terrace. Possibly the most successful club in London, certainly the one with the biggest membership, is the Royal Automobile Club in Pall Mall originally founded for motorists. Mr. Quinn, head porter, is a remarkable man, knows most of the 16,000 members by name. Downstairs is a fine swimming pool. If you don't feel fit enough to swim, try a Turkish bath. You'll soon get knocked into shape. Once in shape, you can play squash, shoot, or get out of shape again at the poolside bar and restaurant. Shops and a post office in the main hall are more facilities that an RAC member gets for his 20 guineas a year, about eight bob a week. Another is a lavish country club at Epsom. No club is complete without its ticker tape machine, where members keep abreast of world news, and with, what, 1 to 2.30. Like all the traditional clubs, the RAC is run solely for the benefit of its members, and can therefore sell food at considerably lower prices than those charged outside. But the bars and smoking rooms are at the heart of clubland. Here the news and gossip of the day is bartered, here the politicians are buttonholed, here perhaps tomorrow's national policies may be in the making. For this, and perhaps a dozen clubs like it, is a meeting ground for the establishment. Of course, you can opt out for a few minutes if you wish. 
Today, it seems that Britain has got gambling fever, and the gambler's idea of paradise is surely Crockford's. If gambling is sinful, it's easy to forget it in these restrained and dignified surroundings. But there's no lack of excitement. Sometimes thousands of pounds hang on the turn of a card at this shemmy table. Or on the spin of the wheel at roulette. Psychologists say that your compulsive gambler unconsciously desires to lose his money, which may help explain why Crockford's does so well. But these are the clubs of the rich, the well-connected, the powerful. There are other clubs than these. Clubs where formality and gentility are one big laugh. Clubs that are merely one room with a bar at the top of a flight of Soho stairs. Clubs that offer none of the amenities of the St. James's lot, yet often charge far more for drink, though a lot less for membership, and yet a nightly pack to suffocation. Presided over by Muriel Belcher, famed equally for a kind heart and a barbed wit, this club is only open during normal pub hours. Drink is far more expensive than in any of dozens of comfortable public houses within a few hundred yards. Yet, against all reason, business booms. Into this dark and smoky womb climb many of the most successful artists, writers and musicians of the day. A few non-entities get in too. A new type of club is springing up, appealing particularly to the young night owl. Jazz singer Annie Ross gives her name to such a club in Covent Garden. Membership is two guineas a year, but that only takes you as far as the bar. Spring another ten bob, and you're in the Holy of Holies, where Annie sings to the devout. You're gonna miss your baby one of these long rainy days. Well, goodbye, 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 goodbye. Clearly what the customers want, that lovely lucid voice, eating, drinking and dancing till three in the morning, all very free and easy. But what they want most, and this goes for all clubs, is to mix with people with whom they have something in common where the face that doesn't fit doesn't get a look in. But never mind, Mr. Tourist, there's a club for everyone in London. Somewhere your face will fit. A little perseverance and you'll be on the inside looking out, part of the secret life of London.